it's a bittersweet feeling this morning, my man. And like, ah, I'm just so conflicted, Ike, because from a big picture standpoint, I like the way that the way that the Steelers are finishing the season, but it leaves a bitter taste in my, on my mouth to say, hey, the season is now over. The Steelers miss out on the playoffs. Yeah, it's tough. Like you say, Mark, bittersweet. Uh, Coach T. Dugo over 500 with the 9-8 to eight record. Uh, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers came up short, you know, came up with Jets, uh, field goal, touchdown, short from from winning against Miami. But Pittsburgh put themselves in that situation at the same time, though. How do you uh, not be proud of a 2-6 and six to be 9-8? and eight? Uh, A Kenny Pickett, a T.J. Watt effect coming back. Uh, a lot of young guys, you know, just grooming and growing throughout the – throughout the season in the George Pickens. So yeah, Najee um, finally running like Najee, a Jalen Warren, uh, your second running back coming and doing this thing as a running back, second on the depth chart. So the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, you got a lot to be proud of this year. Of course, Pittsburgh fell short into making the playoffs, Mark, but they didn't fall short of these young guys grooming and growing throughout the season. From a big picture standpoint, I'd, I, I'm going to start there before we get into the specifics of the game and then all of the playoff matchups. The Steelers have a guy in Kenny Pickett that you can build around for the foreseeable future. And they have a quarterback that you need to develop because, Ike, I look at all seven AFC playoff teams this season. All of them have first-round draft picks at the quarterback position. Now, the NFC is a completely different story. But we talked about how the Steelers need to develop someone at the quarterback position. They have someone in Kenny Pickett who, in these last three games, Ike, when the Steelers needed it to drive down the field and they needed a score, he delivered time and time and time again. We saw that development, that maturity when he first started out, a lot of interceptions, a lot of turnovers. And he understood when to take his chances late in the season. And the development, even as a rookie, to me was impressive. And from a big picture standpoint, that's what I'm going to focus on into this offseason because, Ike, finishing 9-8, and eight, yes, you want to make the playoffs. Yes, it's bittersweet. But had the Steelers gotten in a first-round matchup against a Buffalo Bills team that I think is going to go on a Super Bowl run, I'm just going to say this. Of course you want to get in, but I don't want to play this Buffalo team that's playing inspired football for DeMar Hamlin. So from a big-picture standpoint, I'm okay with where the Steelers finish this season. Again, it's bittersweet. You want to be in the tournament because anything can happen. I, you were on the 05 team, the first six seed ever to win a Super Bowl back when they had six teams. But I like the way that the Steelers finished this season because you were two and six. You were three and seven on Thanksgiving Day, Ike. And if you'd have told me weeks ago that this team would finish above 500, I would have called you crazy. Yeah, Coach T, the magician. He always finding a way. Yeah. He always towards the back half of the season, get his troops riled up to make a push. That's just in Coach T DNA. But now you got a young team. You know, you got a Hall of Famer, Big Ben. He just retired last year. You draft the quarterback and Kenny Pickett. You really don't know what you're drafting into the season. Now, during the season, we always saw the spunk between Mitchell, between him and Mitchell Trubisky. You know, they was going in and out the first couple of games. But you just saw like the little magic. You saw the extra energy. You saw the little flair. You saw the little pizzazz that Kenny Pickett, when he came into that huddle, you saw a little bounce in everybody's step when Kenny Pickett came into that huddle. You saw a few plays. Of course, he made some bad plays, but that that was expected. Um, Going down and playing Miami, I think that changed the Pittsburgh Steelers' mindset. I remember when Coach T was walking off the field with Kenny Pickett. He said, man, it's going to be better in brighter days. And that stuck with me, so I know that stuck with Kenny. So that just told Kenny, like, Okay, I got a head coach who's really behind me um, throughout all these struggles I'm going through. And we saw the back half of the Pittsburgh Steelers in that offense. That offense wound up doing whatever they need to do. If I needed a last drive, who I, who I call on, I call on Kenny Pickett. If I need a, a, a first down or one yard, who I call on Najee. If I need a big play, and we've been talking about this guy, he's different on the offensive side than George Pickett, who I call on. I call on George Pickett. So you got a lot of young Good talent for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who they can build around. You got a tight end, you got a quarterback, you got a running back, and you got a, a, a soon-to-be star receiver in George Pickens on the offensive side. 